<laughs> okay, everybody. So oh. here we are at the Foot Whisperer Reflexology Institute. We are here to do a live 60-minute foot routine video for everybody. Hopefully, y'all like it. And uh, let's get started, shall we? So as we've covered and just really let this be a dialogue between all of us. Imagine the camera isn't there. But, so we're starting with our two points. Ta-da! Yeah, we can definitely feel that that pitting on the on the left side without the right. We have a history of digestive issues on the on the table this past week, so we chose this individual to really uh, help them work through that that physical symptom, but also a lot of career changes, if any of you have read Jane Sheehan's book. And now we are going to the adrenal reflex for 30 seconds. It's a little high, but we're, we're in that, that groove. Oh, we got a little bit of a, a twitch through that left leg, so that's good. Okay, awesome. And towels, please. Brava. <laughs> I'm gonna throw some towels at you in a second. Goodness. That was so crazy. Round one. Round one. <laughs> <laughs> and that is how you wrap a foot, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Thank you, Pit Crew. The magic poly. <laughs> right right here in Tampa. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are so funny. Just a little bit of heat. So just we'll press that all the way in. Thank you. And we wrap to dry the exact same way that we do for the hot towels. dry towel on, start our routine on the right. When, um, when clients are coming in and they have like a, a left extremity issue or a right extremity issue, a lot of times if we, if it's like on the left side, but we start the routine on the right, they'll often ask like, why are you not why are you not touching the foot that that hurts first? And it's always because we know that, you know, the nervous system will take the, the stimulation, the impulses where they need to go. We don't need to work on the, the source of the pain to actually hit it. And that's, that's kind of part of that discussion. It's kind of when you massage, you don't have to massage this side that hurts first, right? You right. Just do the, 
it was on the other side. And we've talked about that before in terms of like, especially there was the question that Mary asked last class about why we don't walk the uh, the plantar surface of the heel um, directly for plantar fasciitis. We kind of would go through the entire ankle routine first before we hit the, the heel. Um, and that's that's part of that discussion as well. You want to make sure that all of the fluid is is gone, all of the nervous system opening has been created, all of that kind of lovely therapy has already moved stuff out of the way before we address it directly. going to take our cream and we're going to gloss the arch. We're going to start just above the pelvic line guideline. Thumb walk into those lower back reflexes. Get about halfway, switch our leverage, and walk up. You can see how little my thumb is actually like bending. It's not, you know, one is because of pressure, but another is because like you don't need that really dramatic bend in order to get a good a good bite. So we're finding a, a little bit of um, semi-crunchiness, semi-fluid buildup in the reflexes for the low back. As I'm pressing that reflex, I can feel the, the cuboid bone kind of popping in and out of place just because of pressure. So that's a, that's a cool sensation. We just wanted to hold that for a little bit. And after our third pass, then we'll move on to the toes. Did you feel any sensation with that low back point? Mm -hmm. like my, it, it was a little bit of a release, but I could feel it going down from the, the, in the knee and in the back. Okay, so knee and back release. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're just getting into that toe space. Fourth toe, however, is really clean, so vertical zone of influence for the low back is pretty, pretty clear. Second toe is very stiff, though, compared to the other ones. So definitely an emotional component to the pain. Uh, and that's also, you know, chest-neck interaction stuff. So just being aware of that. Taking mental inventory as you, as you feel those textures. You know, you're walking through the different reflex areas, but you're really trying to put together the story as you go. So just noticing different things like that. And as I'm walking, like, her low back reflexes are starting to sweat profusely. So that's a really good sign that the body is releasing a lot of that kind of stagnant emotional energy. Now we're getting into that, that big toe routine into the neck. I'll walk it one extra time just because there is a little bit of stiffness through here. And then we're going to go to the plantar surface of the proximal phalanx. Just a little bit of stuff through here. So we're going to use a pulsing pressure just to break that up. And then move it around. Do you see that? How it's the, the point work is part of the routine. It's not separate from the routine. I address things as I find them. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're doing a little bit of a pull technique to get the tissue over my pressure. A lot of stuff in the neck. Mm -hmm. Not I wasn't expect wasn't really expecting to find that stuff in the neck. That's right, the range of motion, I forgot to say about Oh, yeah, yeah the so acupuncture. Like I had, I woke up, I mean, I've been having problems with my neck, and I woke up and I could not move my neck. It was like maybe 15 degrees. Okay. And I went to work, I had three therapists work on me to the point that it got to 45 degrees to the left and 45 degrees to the right. I went to an acupuncturist. And he put me on the pain table face down and did some, did some, um, did the needles and I got 75% range of motion both ways. And then after that, I've been going back to him and I, and I finally have full range of motion. I forgot about that. 
So do I. <laughs> the toes nose. The toes nose. Yes. Uh, now we're moving into those dorsal lymph reflexes. So with everything texture-wise that we've felt already, we have tendencies for emotional buildup. We have some fluid release in the low back, but then the most majority of tension that we're finding right now is in that neck. That's really where kind of if we were walking and building the story as we go, you know, in terms of priorities, like number one would be the neck and then number two would be the low back and then three based on just the stiffness of that second toe, we have a, an emotional component underlying it. But so that's how we're going to talk about that. Okay, let me go into the metatarsal shake. As we get into that horizontal zone three, we can really feel that puffiness, that fluid that's built in through there. Okay, fist comes to horizontal zone two, using the fingers to curl in, which you guys really can't see in the video, but we have YouTube videos to show you this part. There we go. Nice look. Okay. Yeah, so we have this really nice point. This would be right at the bra line. It's very puffy, slightly spasmodic, just finger slipped right in there. It's almost as if the body kind of sucked in my pressure and asked me to stay at this point. So that's why we're going to kind of hold in. There's a, okay, so we got some change in the tissue. The tissue is starting to spread and warm up slightly. And... when the body releases my pressure. So it, it literally just sucked me right into the point. And now I'm just, and now we have some nervous system activity that's happening, almost like a rush of circulation into the point. I'm just waiting to see what happens. And now- Does it push you back out yeah. again? Okay. Yeah, exactly like that. So the body literally just kind of moved things around. Mm -hmm. It's like it's using my pressure. Okay. So when we find these points, it's very much about a dialogue with the body, mm -hmm. figuring out, you know, do I need to press harder? Do I need to pull back a little bit more? Do I need to switch my angle? Do I need to integrate a pulse or, mm -hmm. you know, something of that nature? But it was literally what happened was the point kind of lit up and released me. And that was, that was kind of that how- your signal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then we have something here, but my her feet are a little bit wider than my hands, so I'm actually going to curl in with my opposite hand, and my pressure is going to be on the dorsal aspect right in through here. The point is actually kind of slightly in between and underneath the bone, so I'm going to get a little bit creative to hit that. And you're still aiming for the top of the foot, not the bottom? Top, okay. yeah. You can see my index finger is like fully contracted. That's where that's okay, where my pressure is. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We got a little bit of a, a nice wave-like pulse in that, and that's kind of how we're going to finish that up. Okay. Metatarsal shake again. The feet just got very cold. Hmm. Very cold. Um, so we are moving a lot of stuff stuff. Coldness is uh, part of that water element symptomology. So with the sweating of the low back and everything that we've already experienced, definitely a sign that it's all that horizontal zone four kind of component. Okay. Now we're moving into horizontal zone two, just moving my hand out of the way. I normally like to brace, mm -hmm. but just to, to get a cleaner shot. Two, and then three, there's a lot of rockiness in the chest as well. The bones just aren't sitting properly. I'm not liking that too much. So we're going to hold that point right through there. I'm going to push some of the tissue around. There we go. Okay. Systematically walking up from that diaphragm guideline to the shoulder line guideline three times. Two. <coughs> three. Oh. 
Oh, we've got some sensitivity through there. Oh, no, not so much. Okay. Notice how everybody is itching their faces. <laughs> that is a nervous system response. So your parasympathetic nervous system is picking up on the session, and you are receiving a second hand. Oh wow! That's kind of cool. Yeah. So that's that's why has anybody heard of a ASMR? ASMR. It's a big YouTube thing. Like you just watch people doing relaxing activities, like getting their hair brushed or getting. Oh, a the super slow movie. Yeah, yes, that one. Where they're you watch logs burning on fire right. for four hours. Stuff like that, yeah. and they're, like people yes. doing calligraphy painting and, and stuff like that. Metatarsal head shake for those of you following the technique. But yeah, so when you watch body work, that's what happens. Your nervous system starts to feel as if it were the, you know, the person on the table. Okay, so you get a nice gloss of cream and then we're gonna start in our digestive reflexes, which is the reason why we're using this demo. So we, oh, we got a twitch. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So the body definitely is acknowledging our presence within the, <laughs> the liver reflex on this side. Doing our three passes. And uh, whenever, whenever I come to a place, like especially when I first start out with the spine, my bites get really, really tiny. Really, really tiny, just so that I can slow down, feel, really make sure that I'm not missing anything. And uh, you know, especially if I know that this is an area that I have to really look for stuff. You know, I, I just want to be very careful with my walk because, you know, if they have a history of low back issues, there might be a landmine in the reflexes that I trip over, you know, so I don't want to, I want to be a little bit more focused and thorough than, you know, just walking through the, the reflexes. Okay, switch hands. We're going to do a vertical walk. legs back online with that vertical zone 5 influence. Vertical zone 4, 2, three. Ooh, there's a really nice upward tick. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get it though. See if the tissue responds. Yep, there it goes. Fabulous. What's it doing? What are you getting? It's just a lot of spasmodic tissue right at the in the center of the diaphragm. Okay. And we're moving on. Sometimes you're not, you know, especially during a session, you don't know what you're going to find. You just don't. Even, you know, somebody coming in for a clear-cut issue, they're 100% sure it's in the low back. Nine times out of ten, it's not going to be. So you never know what you're going to get. If you feel like a point may be significant, address it. You know, and then if it turns out to be nothing, it turns out to be nothing. But more times than not, I will trip over points that I don't expect. Mm -hmm. So really investigating every you know point that you find thoroughly is is part of that that exploratory. And we got some release in the left eye. So releasing past emotions, but also releasing that uh, right shoulder, chest area. Two, and then three in vertical zone one. A lot of tight tissue in through here. Actually, I gotta walk that one more time. But I didn't need to. It responded well. Slight lift just for leverage, and then continue that walk in horizontal zone four, just below the waistline guideline. There's a spot. And this is just literally, there's a weakness in the tissue. It literally feels like somebody took a spoon and scraped out a section over foot. It's just the tissue is not there. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm applying static pressure and seeing if the body will kind of reactivate that that texture of that tissue. Mm. 
little bit of movement. Feel that? No, I just not doing anything. So I move on. Meh. Yeah, specifically uh, transverse colon. But when we, you know, and that's that's part of it. Like the points that you expect sometimes won't do anything, and it's because there's another point that's more valuable. Important. Yeah. So the body is like, you know, yes, technically, but keep keep looking. It's like the body's saying you're warm, but not where we need you to be. Right, right. So there was weakness. Mm -hmm. There was very palpable weakness in the digestive reflexes, which we, you know, can expect from such a violent, you know, digestive response. But at the same time that's not where the source is. That's not where the body needs our, our help. Okay. Looking at the camera and realized that I probably used way too much cream, but that's okay. <laughs> really see that fluid as I'm pressing it's really really intense through there so a lot of a lot of fluid build up through the, the low back it's like moving as you squish it yeah but I mean that's the center of water in the body it's all bladder reproductive low back hips I mean that's where water goes to settle so not not unusual okay so after horizontal zone four then we go back up to the toes same thing with the toes. That coolness is still very present in the foot. So that kind of infection of water symptomology that we've that we've talked about before. There's still a lot of stiffness in that second toe. So still a lot of very heavy um, emotional component in that second toe. The When we come back to the toes and we realize how things have changed or shifted, if nothing has changed or shifted, normally it's something on the other foot or the other extremity that needs to be addressed that will unlock that, that stagnant tension. back into the neck, three passes, medial aspect of that proximal phalanx, moving to our five, two, still a lot of crap in the neck. <laughs> but the body's asking me to be more circular and gentle. two seconds. Then we're back. Okay. Walking up our five vertical passes on the big toe. You can see that really beautiful color change. If I pull my thumb away, you can see it really, really strongly, indicating a lot of circulation in the head. If it were stagnant circulation, the color change would be much slower and much more vibrant. So it would flash a deeper red uh, which is not something that I like to see, but it's pretty even. So although we're seeing a lot of misalignment in the structures, the circulation is still really good. So I have a question on the response. Sure. Uh, but I see you said that there was a water into the coolness of the mm -hmm. water. Yeah. 
based on the person and the element that they're more of, would that be an, a, a good indication? Like if if I if it would have gotten hot and I'm more of a water element and it would have gotten hot, would that be would that show something going wrong or that that the, the body isn't accepting it as well? Or no, it would be, you know, we're just looking for elements present. So you okay. have a lot of water to your constitution, so releasing right. water is a good sign. Okay. You know, during a session, if we have somebody with a really strong, fiery constitution and they're releasing a lot of heat, that's also a good sign. You know, okay. but at the same time, if we have somebody with a really dramatic fire constitution and all they're doing is sweating, you know, that would be an excess of water in the tissues. Ah, uh, okay. So here we're getting into those really deep sacral reflexes, trying to make sure that you guys can see that. Switch hands. Normally I'd go like this, but that would block the video. Hmm. Having to get creative, too. A lot of tension in the glutes. Has all of this been a 4 out of 10 pressure, or have you gone deeper in spots? Deeper? Yeah. I'd probably, I've hit maybe about a 6, slightly 7. On some spots? Yeah. Okay. But then I've also pulled back to like a, a one. Mm. So it just, it depends on what's needed. And then there's certain spots that are so tender that he, he hit him, but like he backed off because he knew that they were tender. So it was really cool. Okay. Now we're going to do ankle. Okay. So finding the posterior surface of the lateral malleolus push back and roll on to the pressure. Move down, push back, roll on to the pressure. Move down, push back, roll on to the pressure. Normally about four rolls is all you're gonna get. Then you reset to the back of that ankle, push back, roll out, push back, roll out, push back, roll out, push back, roll out. Reset, push back, roll out, push back, roll out, push back, roll out. And we'll be, this week we'll be doing the the last part of our video series. Dorsal ankle pump. Okay. A lot of hypermobility. I can see why I can see why the acupuncturist called it as reproductive. There's just weakness there, but I don't know. Okay. Moving into the cuboid knot, so we're working in this triangle space. We are going to go up the ascending aspect of the cuboid notch, down the descending aspect of the cuboid notch, and across the base of the cuboid notch three times. There's a lot of tension in the legs. Did they tell you that in school? She goes, no, mommy, I just know. <laughs> there you go. Out of the mouths of babes. Out of the mouths of babes. Okay, started with our two horizontal rows on zone five, moving into our three passes each on the vertical zones in zone five. Stopping at this point needs a little bit of TLC, but it got a little bit spicy for two seconds, so we're not trying to torture anybody. Mm 
that needs another pass. One, two, Relaxation techniques. Calf massage. Is your knuckle roll following the same line that you would do for the spine walk? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wrap this sucker up. And then let's... No, no. Keep the, keep the cord. That's okay. We're, we're good. I'll slide it up and over. No, you're fine. There we go. Ta-da! Perfect. are so funny. My amazing pet crew. <laughs> Future generations will pray to you as the saints of reflexology. <laughs> also see just right off the bat how that second toe has kind of dipped down so back to that kind of comparing and contrasting second toe tension on one side versus another definitely we can see a sign of that potentially being here on this foot as well It feels like um, some fibrous build up on the lateral edge of the spinal vertebra. So we're using just a little bit of a dorsal kind of pump to, to break up that. There should be a nice release of heat it's happening from that. Okay. 
and oh, and we got some stuff here. So we're just holding, applying pressure, and seeing what happens. From there, we adjust, and that's how you should address all points. If you go in too deep, the body's going to shut you out. If you go in too light, the body's not going to take you seriously. It's it's about finding that that perfect pressure and working with the tissues that you're trying to engage. It's just like any conversation. You walk up to a group of people and you just start yelling and screaming at them. It's like they're not going to listen to you. They're going to think you're a crazy person. You walk into a group and you don't say anything and you just kind of sulk in the corner. It's like they're not going to engage with you because they don't know what to say. They're also going to think you're a crazy person. Yes, true. <laughs> Have you known to use a uh, pressure of 9 or 10 on a reflex? Yeah. Um, it just depends on... It just depends on what's needed. A tr when true deep pressure is needed, it mm -hmm. doesn't feel like deep pressure. So on my clients where I'm literally kind of going through the other side of the extremity when I'm like really in there, they think it feels fantastic because they feel it as maybe like a four tops because their nervous system is welcoming the, the stimulus versus, you know, you hit the wrong reflex with even a light amount of pressure and it feels like a 10 out of 10. So it's dependent on the patient who's accepting the, the pressure. Right. Always based on, you know, what is needed for that point at that moment. Not so much tension in the second toe, but definitely more towards the, the pad of the toe that distal phalanx is, is congested still. She still hasn't vocalized all of that internal stuff. And water. Right? And don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> okay. Into the uh, medial neck reflexes. Oh, yeah, we got some. Crunchy. And we're going to back off, let them rest, and we're going to readdress. Back off. It's interesting because, like, that's. Um, so I've been going to Jeanette, the chiropractor, yeah. as well, and she has been my. Um, skull has been, she said it's like tilted on the axis hmm. so um, it's messing with the TMJ and she's been having to align the actual like occiput itself um, so it's been quite interesting and exactly where you're hitting on the skull it, it's like almost the same it's like the exact area where she's aligning hmm. so it's quite interesting yeah I love Jeanette just because she's when you find a chiropractor that really works with the body there are times especially i have my clients that they they adore their chiropractor but they come and see me just oh there was a nice twitch with that one um but they come and see me and i'll literally write notes to their chiropractor i'm like look this is what i found and you know this is what you need to adjust and watch out for this and you know this probably won't move so you know be patient with it because there's there's fluid here and you know, when you get a chiropractor who's really receptive to that level of guidance from another practitioner, it can be a beautiful match. But I've had chiropractors send me notes back saying, I don't know how you knew that, but please stay away from my patient and let me do my job. I'm like, okay. Um, so egos tend to get in the way just a little bit, but ultimately um, one of my favorite people to refer to, including Jeanette, is a craniosacral therapist who I interviewed here. Her name is Amy Rinkovich, and her and I, I mean, we refer, oh, sorry for that sensitivity, hun. Okay. We, uh, yeah, there was, a, there was a lot, lot that we have in common, and she's an RN. She works a lot with children. It's a, it's a fantastic referral relationship. Ooh, yeah. I saw that weakness in the fallopian tube reflex. Check in for the pulse, Kevin. Yes. 
<laughs> she had another baby. No. 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 Is it my parents, my my mother, and Mother's Day? All of the mothers were like, ha, ah, this is fantastic. Have you been emotional? <laughs> they were trying to diagnose you. They <laughs> were trying to diagnose me. Okay. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> Crazy. It's like saying, are you a girl? Right. right. Yeah. Do you breathe? Are you living <laughs> in any way, shape, or form? I, I, I cry at commercials. I mean, it's just who I am. Oh, that Kohl's commercial a couple years ago for Christmas just got me. Oh, <laughs> right there in the fields. When I was pregnant, there was this uh, visit Puerto Rico. And there were these little, like, like... They would snap stuff, and it was like all these pictures of Puerto Rico. And I, every time that that commercial would come on, I would cry my eyes out. And there was this one about Alzheimer's every time, and the the, the ones about the arms of the angel. The oh, commercials! I have to switch the channel. Oh, that those, those are animals. animals. Yeah, those are intentionally cruel. Yes, with little kids sitting on the side of the road, right, with their giant saucer eyes. Okay. So there is a weakness in the Philippines, it's okay. Weakness. So it's literally air in the reflex. There's just nothing there. I mean, it, it needs to be bolstered, but I'm not sure. When it, when he says that, that that needed to be addressed, I'm not, I'm not sure his context for it, because he uses a very different vocabulary than I do. Yeah. Um, but then it goes back, like, do you nourish the weak spot, or do you unwind the tight spot? You know, it's both are valid. Um, but both are just one half of the equation. So, you know, we need the, the full picture here. Okay, so we have some direct impingement. Uh, you guys can't see this on the video, but um, I'm on the dorsal aspect of the foot right in between uh, the second and third metatarsal proximal heads. And um, right at that... <laughs> <laughs> Knocking over cameras. Before you do that, let's... Oh, goodness. Here, try that. I've been wanting to do this. There you go. We'll edit that out of the YouTube version. Whoop. 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 Hold on. Let's pull it back on that side. Craziness! Okay. Are we good? No. no. Slipping. The door. Let's take the towel out. There we go. Are we good? Are we stable? Is the world is the world back? Okay, so back to back any to this. <laughs> any survivors? <laughs> back to this uh, this reflex point. So actually, while we were doing that, it kind of unwound just a little bit. Uh, but it's basically right in the center of the thoracic vertebra, um, direct line of nerve uh, to the stomach. So that hardness in the in the spine definitely kind of contributed to that. Oh, and then we gotta. I'm going to just yank those bones open just a little bit. So just making some space in the, the tarsals. And now we're back. Apparently that was good because we got more people watching. They were, they were curious about the chaos. <laughs> I know. <laughs> George is fine, right? George is fine. <laughs> oh, goodness! That looks so silly. Okay. One, two. That's too much. Okay. So um, on the right foot, we had center of the chest, a lot of hardness, a lot of misalignment of the bones of the foot. Here we have the opposite, so it's a perfect example of compensation in the reflexes. Here there's actually a weakness. I'm falling into the reflex underneath my, my thumb. The body is just taking me right into this really nice canal of nothing. Uh, so on one side it was super tight, on this side it was super loose and reflexology will seek to kind of balance those two polarities. Two. Three. I feel like we have some questions brewing. 
Any questions coming up on the In the chest, would the crunchiness and then the, the, the emptiness, would that also be like maybe like a congestion that pop that was there that's not there anymore? Or is it... it uh, no, so from from a physical standpoint, it's mm -hmm. on the left side, the, the chest, pack, rib, kind of physical tissues are weaker, um, they're hypermobile, and then on the right side, they're tight, rigid, and locked. Okay, and that, okay, okay. Mentally and emotionally, it's the, the emotional hardness, the rigidity, the, the clamping down emotionally, versus now it's like everything is open and has become more free. But physically, we want to make sure that everything stays balanced. Right, and that, that makes sense considering that the right side, the shoulders and stuff are probably more or worse than, okay. I'm just painting a mental picture in my head. So that, would that correlate to the left lung and the right lung? Uh, when I look at, when I look for lung reflexes, it's more, it's more holistic, it's more all throughout too. It's mm -hmm. kind of like a general mm -hmm. texture versus when I'm when you're feeling for, you know, skeletal reflexes, you're looking at the bones. Mm -hmm. um, the the lungs are soft tissue technically, so they feel more like soft tissue. So what you felt was more bony. Yeah. Oh. And then uh, as we enter the stomach, there's a lot of the body is guarding like very fiercely the the stomach like so fiercely, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to slow down and back off. So we really just need to, to play it very cautiously through here. I've, on the left is the stomach, the right is the liver. Right. But you got a good twitch on the liver. Yeah, but the this, body. This side is. So what, what, scared. Yeah, basically. very, very much so. Um, I feel, I feel like I'm walking into a tiger's den. Like mm -hmm. as I'm walking through here, like the body is so on edge, mm -hmm. in this area. It's, it's. Crazy town. Is that, is that presenting in a in the form of like tension? Yeah, or? tension. Okay. Um, like literally, as I'm walking, I feel like I'm walking on broken glass. Like the the nervous system is just ready to snap at any moment. Yeah. Um, it's it's very interesting um, sensation always, but we're really. Is it hard or is it? It's it's almost like the tension is so strong, I'm not able to sink into the reflexes. We have some itching happening throughout horizontal zone two as well, so that's a good sign. Um, but yeah, so it's it's just tension that's very very strong. Almost, it feels like it feels like a mouse trap. Like you're you're really you're on something that's loaded. So would you work more on that area, or would you try to avoid that area? Uh, definitely walk it. Just walk it differently. differently. Um, uh, I'm, I'm really, I'm backed off to maybe like a one and a half to two. I'm really taking it slow. I'm really being systematic. I'm feeling for reflexes, but the body's not even letting me in really to any of the, any of the reflexes right now. I'm just basically going through the technique as slowly and carefully as I, as I can. So would you say that that is a result of the recent trauma that, yeah. that she had in that yeah. area? And that's... The body is still guarding. Because of fear? Yeah. What zone would you say that would be in? Three. 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 Yeah. Do you ever notice a difference in the texture from going horizontal versus vertical? Like, do you ever find that you it lets you in more going one direction and not the other? Yeah. I mean, vertical is definitely more recept received because we're kind of in line with the yeah, tissue. With the tissue. Um, but horizontal is so important for palpation. Um, really from a horizontal direction, if we wanted to think of reflexes specifically, horizontally when we're in three, you really hit the gallbladder and spleen reflexes nicely, as well as down by the pancreas. So we really, we have some horizontal reflexes that are really easy to palpate from that direction. but vertically the tissues do tend to open up more just because it's in the natural alignment with the muscles and structures. So right here we have a point in the center of the stomach but it's uh, horizontal zone three vertical zone two so the influence of emotions, emotions on career but also chest lung on uh, chest lung shoulders on digestive and there's there's a very pinpointed um, sensation here. Ooh, tip of tongue tingle very nice. 
Um, the way that it feels in the tissue, it literally feels like I'm balancing on the head of a pin. It feels like there's a very minute grain of a point, almost like the tip of a nerve ending that has gotten very sharp, that the body has almost magnetized me to. Is that a stomach gurgle? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Perfect. So great stomach gurgle. Um, the pin sensation, that really sharp point, isn't melting, but the surrounding tissue is responding really nicely. So I'm continuing because I'm feeling movement, because the body is trying to move things around. I'm going to keep my pressure steady. And every once in a while, I'm kind of pushing a little bit more just to see if the body's trying to let me in. If it's not, I'm backing up to see, you know, where it wants me to be. It's, it's a constant, subtle dialogue. And sometimes it takes a while. Very rarely will I hold a point for more than a minute. But this point, for some reason, is needing more than a minute. And now I got the, the signal to release. And we're just going to give that point just a little bit of love, because that was, that was crazy. And we got, we got water. We got lots of water. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's like you, you can really see this nice shimmer. It's the body let go of a lot of, a lot of fluid. Oh, and there's a point right above it, right in the center of the diaphragm, so we're going to hold that. This is the boring part of a reflexology session. For for all intents and purposes, we're just... Oh, we got a little twitch in the toe. Uh, second twitch in the toe. I'm going to go for three. <laughs> um, but yeah. No, body's not really... Body's not really giving me much with this point, so we're going to move on. Two, three. Okay, so here we're into the lower GI reflexes and the texture is soft and pliable, but stringy. Um, uh, there are strains of tension, but nothing like into the actual uh, stomach itself. So there might be more of a sharpness um, that she feels while I'm walking, but nothing, nothing like the level of guardedness. Oh, and the, the lower GI has been blown open, would be a good way to, to say it. Like, the sphincters are, sphincters are going a little bit nuts. Which I see that a lot. Um, I had one woman come in to see me, and she, uh, ate at a restaurant, got food poisoning, mm -hmm. and she was still experiencing uh, symptoms uh, about two and a half weeks later. Goodness. And what I noticed was on right, right through here, four and four and four and five, which would be right at that sigmoid flexure, at the start of that sigmoid flexure, the reflexes were very broad, open, and lacked any tension, almost as if the sphincters were still wide open from the explosive food poisoning. So what I suggested was that she actually practice Kegel exercises, like contracting the core to actually retone that sphincter. And she said within 24 hours, everything was totally fine. Um, so it wasn't necessarily that the body was still poisoned. It just needed to be reset from an, from an internal level. So it was, it was interesting. And I'm sure the reflexology helped too. But it was just that, that lifestyle of, you know, that change of pulling things up and in to, to retone the, the core that had loosened. And again, normally I would hold, I just want you guys to, to see this. Have you had people just uh, stop the session and have to get up and use the bathroom as a result of what you're doing? A couple times. Yeah. Um, it's rare. Um, I find that more people pass gas during the session. Mm -hmm. Um, when they have the digestive issues, very rarely from a, from a lower GI standpoint, more so from a bladder standpoint. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of people that need to, to take a break halfway because their bladder has gotten very full, which is a unique, um, kind of sign that the fluid systems of the body have, have started to, to wake back up. Two, and then three, and then we're going to back to toes.
Yeah, I, I feel it. <laughs> Got tearing happening in the in the eyes. Yeah. Okay, so as we kind of start to rewalk the toes again, the body releases fluid from the face through the eyes. That's a sign that you know we're we're decompressing a lot of those facial structures, which is really good. The big toe has definitely gotten like chilly. Just the big toe? Yeah. We're really just having a, oh, sorry, hon. Okay. We're really, the, the neck of the big toe on the left foot is very, very sensitive, and I'm finding a lot of stuff through here. So we're having to strike a very delicate balance between helping and hurting. Um, but at the same time, I'm still using like a three out of 10 in pressure. Not even now, now I'm at a two. So normally I would look for leverage, but leverage actually makes my pressure stronger, so I've released my leverage, and now I'm just walking very plainly, and I'm trying not to trigger any more of that that stuff. So we're just going to hold this nice point. But even then, this little point is sensitive, and I'm only still at a three. It's like the body is just... And I think that has to do with the coldness as well, as the body has, has decided that the head and neck is off limits for the rest of the session, and we're we're continuing to, to work through there. So we're just going to speed up the technique a little bit and move on. And that's, so when, when you guys ask me questions about time um, and timing with the, you know, filling the 60 minutes or going over, you know, you won't spend the same amount of time on each reflex area. So you really want to just know that certain areas you're going to fly through because you don't find anything there and then other areas you might spend a good you know five minutes just because of what you what you feel and what you find now the coldness on the left toe meant to, to that's off limits but the coldness on the right foot because it was a full foot meant that it was accepting it is it does it is it based upon like if it's just one single area versus the entire Yes. So when we see a broad symptom, it's just the body. Um, we're about to go into the the ankle as well, Ms. Maris. Um So if you wanted to come on close, okay. So we'll we'll table that conversation and let's go through this technique one more time. So pressure on the posterior surface of the lateral malleoli. We're gonna push back, roll out. Push back, roll out. And each time we press back and roll out, we're moving our pressure ever so slightly around that crescent mm -hmm. on the posterior surface. So if you see my index finger, we're kind of moving and moving and circulating at the same time. Mm -hmm. And here we actually have a lot of bone restriction in the in the left hip. Yeah, yeah you it's, can see from here it's just not moving. Just not moving. It's not mm -hmm. going. It's not going. We gotta do a little bit of a little bit of this. A little bit of that. And it's still not going. Okay. We'll take that. Um, so back to the back to the question about holistic temperature change versus vo localized temperature change. Um, when I saw it on the other foot or felt it rather, it was kind of to me a sign that the body was moving things on a grand scale. Here, it's definitely a very focused symptomology, and the body has decided, especially with what we've been finding on this side, to increase the sensitivity. It's almost like it, the body decided to do massive construction on that area, and the way that it decided to do that was by turning it cold and depriving it of circulation and constricting the tissues, while, you know, it really didn't account for us coming back again. So it's like we were driving through their construction site. 
would be a good way to say it. We're really talking about so many nuances of reflexology. For, so for those of you who are online watching, uh, definitely post your questions, comments, and concerns. There's a lot that we need to talk about. Don't try to take all of this in at once. We're, we're talking with our certification program students in the background, so they have many more hours of training than, than somebody who's maybe just watching a reflexology video for the first time and content that's unique to the institute here. So a lot of vocabulary is probably going way over your heads and that's okay. Don't feel, don't feel dumb. They just have, they just got miles on you. Still goes over some of our heads too. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why you're in a 12 month training program. And not a weekend workshop. Exactly. That isn't teaching real reflexology, not better. It still it still amazes me how I, I get contacts um, I get contacted by people who want to take um, either weekend courses that we do or even the certification program and I'm like it's one weekend a month for 12 months or we have you know 12 hour intro courses and stuff like that and they're like well with the 12 hour intro courses am I certified <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> no <laughs> you know but that's that's the mentality like right now you can take multiple reflexology courses online and they offer a certification you know that's not national standard but that's kind of where we're at it's this beautiful it's this beautiful counterforce between having access in an unlimited way to so much more information than we ever did before and actually like putting in the work and taking a, a training well it's interesting because when i had my uh, my interview he asked me specifically what the reflexology that i did and what what it was about and when I explained that it's just a little bit different and it's based more on assessment and helping the central nervous system relax and help the organs in the body help it relax so that it can help itself, um, but that there's that that pathological and, and, and um, assessment that is attached to it. Um, he said that he was he was really impressed at one how. I used a lot of your verbiage and how I explained it and how it's very different. It's not the same. Right. So, and it's, it's more medical. Because I didn't go into the woo-woo stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I gotta tell you, like, talking with these two um, massage association chapters this past week, it's amazing how, it, you know, I go through the list of physical symptoms that I see and I'm like, well, here's a sh old shoulder injury, here's the low back pain, here's the sciatica, you know, here's the digestive problem, but then you like nail on the head a mental emotional issue mm -hmm. and they freak out. Um, and it, that's all they wanna talk about for the next hour. And so it's, it's a very different conversation. I mean, especially when somebody has a diagnosis already it's something that, well, you know, that's not impressive because an x-ray can tell me that, but an x-ray can't tell you that you had a fight with your family last mm -hmm. week, you know, but we can see that through signs of calculated stress that are manifest through the extremity. And that's, that's just a side of the work that impresses people more, um, but at the same time is much more sensitive and needs to be handled with a level of delicacy that uh, is just much more careful. Mm -hmm. I, uh... I use the term weakness with my friend that I was mentioning. I use the term weakness um, to describe something, and she's like, I don't like that. I don't, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, come, well, let me explain what I mean by that, and I kind of explained into it a little bit, and she's like, oh, okay. So that was my first taste of, whoa, 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 don't tell me I've got a weakness. Push back. Okay, yeah. wait a minute. That's not what I meant. <laughs> So learning that, that balance between verbiage and explanation was really interesting. She's got a super high arch. No, it's, it was actually divots in her face from um, mm -hmm. from pockmark. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, Acne? Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Um, chicken pox. Oh. Oh, cool. Chicken pox. And I was like, it doesn't mean you're weak. That's not what it means at all. It just means that that's where your stress is going to go first. Right. That's where you're going to find your symptomology 
when you have these issues. And she's like, oh, that's fine. Awesome. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> Tell Kevin, give me our those son, towels. Our yeah. son. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. So funny. Kevin is looking for his own weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> Who's checking to see if he was pregnant? <laughs> Did you get a pulse? <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to let you live that one yet. So funny. Now we got to get your wife in here. We all have to touch oh, your feet. Yeah. All right. Feel the pulse. Check mine. There you go. Check hers and then check mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I've tried. It's not. No. It doesn't work that way. The only way I was actually able to tell pregnancy um, is if dysfunction, and I'm looking just at the dysfunction. You know, I'm saying there's significant stress around the reproductive reflexes, like what is going on? And they're like, I've had a very difficult pregnancy so far. And I'm like, I wouldn't have been able to tell you were pregnant. Um, but, you know, the body is saying that something's going on here. In a normal pregnancy, like you shouldn't be able to, to tell. I haven't been able to see anything different. Mm -hmm. That's true. So. it's not a symptom. Right. It's not. It's normal human development. Now, as you get later on, you know, there are signs that you need to watch out for, like preeclampsia and, you know, things of that nature, swelling around the ankles, tenderness around the ankles, you know, as the lax, laxitocin, la, la, relaxin, relaxin, that one, mm -hmm. uh, starts to flow, everything starts to become much more hypermobile. Uh, so that's, you know, a key indicator, but it's not like there's a, there's a button that you can look at to say, you know, She's pregnant, she's not pregnant. The, uh, I was able to see and get relatively accurate at um, palpating the number of eggs uh, only because I had a client undergo very intensive IVF. Like they were injecting her with more stuff than should have been injected because she requested it. Um, and I've, I've seen this multiple times and it's just the body goes into an overgrowth. And so it's very interesting to see, you know, you can feel the uterus holding water and heating up and you can feel the ovaries swelling and, you know, things of that nature. It's very, very interesting. But that was only under a situation that is not normal for for human anatomy to undergo with that intense level of hormone injection. So how many years in would you say is it that you like were they evil or like, oh I can feel this this is this organ. This is this is this organ. It was at it was really at my second location that I started to put two and two together and that was got reflexology a year and a half in and then we moved two and a half years and then maybe about two years in was when I really got good um, so it took me about two years of, of seeing stuff and even then it really just didn't all make sense I mean it was just theory mm -hmm. and my school didn't teach assessment so it was like it was it was all just looking at a book like they didn't believe that you could actually assess. They believed that you could press an effect, but not actually assess. So it was only until I started reading, you know, Jane Sheehan's book and, you know, um, Amir Samoji's book and all that jazz with assessment that I started to believe, you know, what if, what if this is actually how it goes? And it turns out that that was kind of how it went. So really, it, it was more of a mental shift. So you guys are really, 10 times ahead of where I was when I first started. It's just about, you know, practice from that point on. So after you finish a session, on average, how much time you spend on like a post after the session? Maybe about five minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, just depends. Sometimes I'll end the session early, just depending on how much we have to talk about. But for those of you watching, that was a full 60 minute foot reflexology routine. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and we will see y'all later.